and I was I was a K eight art teacher for a long time. Well, there's so many and, good um, here. I tried to do basket weaving with kids where we went out and like picked on the materials and no, dyed them and then totally what made baskets. It was a disaster. I, mean, I just didn't that. know enough. <laughs>
you know, because that, that's the hybrid of stuff. I suck. I need a long term stuff. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. Did you have any kids in your room? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you but it, it changed. Uh -huh. So, in that cohort, I have to have a different process. So, like, I had the kids on Monday, or on Tuesday, and yeah. Wednesday. And, and then, then Thursday, Friday. Friday. Yeah. And then it was That's Friday. how we did it. Oh, yeah. And it was just like, it was 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 like, so every every period you have kids who never come to school, right? Just the kids who opted not to come back. Then you've got the kids who it's not their day to be at school, but they come to school. You, you know, like let's say it's Tuesday, you've got the, the, the um, Thursday, Friday kids in virtually, and you've got the kids who never come to school, and then you've got kids in the room. So you're basically teaching three groups of kids. Especially because, like, you double of that. Well, yeah. I had to repeat it for the kids that were in person. And then, like, but then you're also doing it for the kids behind the kids that are in person. Oh, and that's what they do. The kids who are away. Right, right. No, they, 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 they log in, and then they go watch TV, or they go outside and play. They're not there. I think that's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We're going to have a break, then we're going to go into some social studies and visual arts, uh, conflict and cooperation through ledger art, and we kind of got a piece of that yesterday with um, Peggy's uh, dance boat movements with that, and then we'll have another break, and then we'll do some closing reflection and rotations. So that's the big picture today. We're really just going to walk you through two lessons that have many and varied ways of looking at them. Uh, so that you can see what the way that we've been developing the curriculum. So for the check-in, go ahead. Yeah, so for the check-in, good morning. Um, for the check-in, we're going to say, if this school was a fruit or a vegetable, what would it be and why? School year. School year, year not school. This school is fine, I'm sure. But what is, if this school year, this last school year, not the future school year, was a vegetable, what would it be and why? So you can tell us. You could... Dance it. <laughs> Did I say that? Yeah, right. Yeah, you sure. could dance it, create some sort of like physical shape, and dance it. Or you could draw it and be like, it's a tomato because it doesn't know what it is, yeah. right? Like it can be any of those things. So we're gonna give you like ten minutes to work on that, and then we'll share it out. Um, and we'll come up into a standing circle to share it out in about ten minutes. That sounds great. Awesome. Cool. This year we're a fruit or vegetable. What would it be? Yes. And what? You can illustrate it or you can dance it. <laughs> Yes, yeah. 
years. I've been looking for the for the skinny mirror. I haven't found it yet. <laughs> Not this one. Um, but see, I can't see. I get these are inexpensive and easy to move, but they're so damn fragile. I've never had one. I've never seen one that doesn't get just that doesn't get destroyed. Even like, but I just feel like it's weird that Andrew Trump. Those mirrors are watching Andrew
in order to make it. Aww. Maybe I was hanging. <laughs> already to hang myself. Okay. Thank you. So remember, I think I was carrot. Yeah. Carrots. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to go along with your squash analogy, but I'm going to make it one with a much harder um, outside, which is the um, acorn squash. It's really hard to cut through. Just like you got to do a lot of work to get through to that soft part and to those seeds. But those seeds are big, and there was so much great stuff that came out that we're not going to throw away. We're going to toast them up. And we're going to keep them, yes. right? Um, going forward. So, uh, but you know, there's a lot of bumpy edges on those those big heavy squashes too uh, that our our bodies took on this year. Yes. So <laughs> that was tough as well. So. I would say hard squash.
and was surprising me. So many contrasts. And I hope, and what is wonderful about having something bitter is when you have something sweet after it, it's so much more sweet because of the contrast. So, uh, my name is Bhakti. Uh, oh, yeah. Bhakti. And uh, I chose an avocado tree uh, because uh, avocado trees take a lot of water. Um, they consume a lot of water in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And it felt like this school year, um, we needed <laughs> a lot of water, a lot, a lot of, you know, uh, in terms of resources into the, into what it is. But if you're patient, you know, a couple of years down the road, grow something uh, delicious. I can do you and all that. And then um, I put a 
connection. workshop. That's why we engage in the 5e model in science, right? That's why we do STEM integrated lessons, so that it's a construction of meaning. Okay. So why arts integration? <laughs> why do we want to get involved in this process? Well, I would say there's two major reasons why arts integration is essential in elementary school that have nothing to do with the art form, okay? The art forms are extremely important as well. I like to think about it as, um, in the same way we think about ELD, we have designated ELD lessons and we have integrated ELD lessons, right? So we have in the arts, designated arts lessons, we're going to learn technique with watercolor, or we're going to learn a particular theater game, or we're going to learn how to do a beginning, middle, and end dance and why that happens. But we, but we also have these integrated places where we're putting it in, right? So it's kind of the same way of thinking about it. But there's two major reasons in elementary school why arts integration is, is absolutely essential. And it's social justice and social emotional learning. So we're gonna talk about this in terms of student identity. So the four major components of the social justice standards, and I linked them in here from Teaching Tolerance, so you guys can look at that later, are identity, diversity, justice, and action. So we're helping our kids to build their identity, to celebrate, to, to affirm their identity, to celebrate diversity in their community, to teach justice through this diversity, and to inspire action. 
So we want our kids to be inspired to make a difference in the world. And that's what the social justice frame, framework is about. And that's what the arts help us to do, is to inspire how can I change what I see in front of me. That's what STEM helps us to do, right? There's a problem that needs to be solved. How can I go about solving it? And that's the same thing that we do through, through the arts. Artists are constantly grappling with the social issues of the day. Whether they're writing a play or a movie about it, whether they're putting together you know, long form movies, which are what TV has turned into now, which is really kind of cool, episodic television. Um, they're grappling with, this, with the social issues of the day, whether they're creating a sculpture or a piece of art or um, a TikTok video or whatever they're doing, they're, they're, they're inspired to action. So all of this can be done through, through the arts. Um, through this process. So that piece, and then the other essential piece is social emotional learning. So most of you have probably seen this circle. This is from Castle. I also linked in another article here, which is really, really interesting about equity and SEL. Because when we look at these five competencies, we look often at these competencies through the lens of our own uh, identity, right? So from what where I grew up in my family and the culture that I grew up in, I might see social awareness in a different way than, than somebody across the room from me might see social awareness. I might have a bias on what I think responsible decision making looks like it could be very different from what responsible decision making looks like for Salvador, right, in his family. Um, because of the, the, what we were brought up in. That doesn't mean it's good or bad, it's just that we want to be aware that the way that we define each of these categories of SEO uh, might be a little bit different than the families that we work with. So this article kind of grapples with that. Because okay. when we look at these five areas on the surface, we think, oh, of course. We help kids to be more self-aware. We help them to manage themselves. We were talking about this a little bit yesterday with like walking and lines <laughs> and all of that. But you know, how can we affirm their identity and still allow for, um, for that, that space in the, in the classroom and that control? And then uh, the social awareness and the relationship skills, uh, and that lead to that responsible decision making. But it looks different in different ways, and if we're aware of that, then we can kind of grapple with it. But just quickly, as you look at these five competencies, social emotional learning competencies, and you think about some of what we did yesterday, what in what we did yesterday helped build self-management? the activities that we engaged in yesterday, where did you see a building of self-management? I saw it in when we were dancing and we had to freeze. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Having to freeze. And it's okay if I kind of, oops, I fell. You know, that's, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But I had to walk around and not run into You know, walking without crashing into people is really challenging. Crash. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's really challenging. And it's really challenging for kids, like I said, under third grade. Yeah. yeah. Just being able to do that. Okay, good. And in what we did yesterday, where did you see responsible decision making? Where did in, you? In the uh, collaboration, you know, uh, not trying to not trying to do anything too crazy, you know, mm -hmm. where uh, your teammates, you know, yeah, not trying to have them say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. In the in when we're yeah, making the spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I had to go. Okay, what can I do? That, where I can manage my body, and I'm going to follow the criteria, the medium level, right? And I'm not going to fall over, and I'm not going to hurt anybody else, right? So that was kind of all of these in one place, right? It was social awareness, self management, and responsible decision making, right? And like, I know with uh, Nicole, like at one point she's like, I can't reach that. So I had to bring myself lower so that she could be a part of it. Interesting, excellent. So that's also relationship skills, it's physical relationship. Absolutely, absolutely. 
All right. And then where yesterday did we see, um, let's, let's go back to this um, social awareness. Where else did we see that? Well, we were pretending to be birds and we were socializing and taking leadership or following. Uh -huh. So it's a part of social. Absolutely. Absolutely. Working together, like uh, mirroring each other mm -hmm. or call and response. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So when we look at, um, like in any lesson that we do, you can almost just pull up this wheel and go, huh, where in the lesson am I integrating pieces of one of these competencies? So again, it doesn't have to be, I have to teach SEL lessons from this time, and then I have to teach math, and then I have to teach visual arts, and then I have to teach, right? These things can, can come together. Oh, and don't forget, I want kids to be able to like have a voice and you know um, speak up for themselves. So when you look at the when you look at the uh, social justice standards for K two, it's very much like being able to speak for yourself, right? It's, they're very they're they're simple but but really powerful. So going back to this at any time is really really important. And in all of the curriculum that we've developed, this is the foundational piece in everything we're doing. So I do encourage you to go back to this to this article. We did, I know, uh, I had some, like an SEL six-week course. Uh -huh. And the one thing that we, in my class, we did a lot was we had soup. <clears throat> like if someone was like just freaking out online, like you could see them crying, mm -hmm. like what's going on. And uh -huh. I couldn't hear them, but they couldn't, you know, communicate. So we'd be like, okay, and like the kids would do it. Okay, get your bowl of soup out and blow into your soup uh -huh. to calm them down. And they would actually do it. And mm -hmm. like, at first I just kept doing it and then the kids like started chiming in. Hey, J uh, Joshua, get your soup out. Like the kids would be talking, you know, because you did have a few of those. Right, and and that's it's actually just, we're gonna get into some of that of the, the release and yeah. then the blow. It's oh, helpful for the bodies. The body as well. So, you know, I posed this question, I think we've already kind of been thinking about it, is how might arts integration support the SEL competencies they have the social justice standards? So, you can always justify what you're doing in the arts by looking at it through those two lenses as well. Um, and saying, I'm, you know, I'm engaging in this lesson because it helps kids to build their identity and social awareness, right? So now you've got those two pieces along with the art form. Okay. So let's go into um, the how. How arts integration, how do we do it? So really we want to think about these four layers. I know we're going to do a little bit behind it. And this has grade levels, but it doesn't have to have grade levels. You can think of this within a unit, within a lesson, within anything. Is that there has to be an exploration phase in anything we're doing in the arts. And then we practice, we get better and better at it. So, Maybe I'm going to play with my oil pastels, so I'm going to make a big mess, and then I'm going to practice the technique of blending over and over and over again and, and apply it in many different pieces of work as I develop my technique. And then I might become get to a place where I actually have mastery over that particular skill, right, as we develop. So, and this is kind of in any learning, right? We want to explore and then practice in order to develop in order to master. So as we continue with that, um, oh, I think I have, I have too many. There we go, whoops, there we go, here we go. We want to really help kids to cross this bridge, right? From not knowing something to knowing something. So we go from this exploration, what are these things? that I'm dealing with, what is this idea of a tableau? How do I use it? Where are they put to best use? So now where, how can I develop um, my, these skills? And then how do they relate to other things is in the mastery, yes? I also see a mirroring of identity, diversity, mm -hmm. justice, action, right? Because to be like, boom, 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 boom. To be able to get to action, we have to understand who you are, why we're different why those differences cause injustice and how we cause action to do Absolutely. Like, it's just, a, yeah. just those four layers of the social justice framework. Yeah, absolutely. So, and sometimes what happens, 
in teaching <laughs> and learning is that we stop here, right? We do a lot of like exploration and having the kids practice, 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 but then maybe they haven't gotten the chance to think about putting it to best, putting that to use or relating it to other things. The, heart, the arts really help us to relate a concept in many and varied ways to help get the kids across that bridge. So that's kind of, we don't want them to fall in the water because they practice, 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 but they're not sure why and where to use it, right? So that's kind of the, the idea there. So another way of looking at it is let's play, let's work on it, let's connect it, and let's apply it in our own way. So that last step of taking it to an application in a way that makes sense to me is super important for crossing that bridge um, and not falling in the water, okay? So when we look at the arts standards, there's four areas to the arts standards. Um, feel free, you can use the colors of the paper however you like. Um, and I, I made this graphic because I don't want it to seem linear <laughs> because we engage in them in all different ways. There's four areas. There are responding standards, there are connecting standards, there are creating standards, and then the P is perform, present, or produce, depending on the art form. Okay. And the thing that I think is really powerful about these standards is that only one-fourth of it is what we have traditionally thought about in the arts. Right? A lot of teachers think, oh, the arts, that means I have to make something, I have to do a performance, or I have to present something. Right? It's the product. But that's actually only one-fourth of the standards. Right? Most of the meat is in the creation, the connecting, and the responding. And they can kind of go in any order. And that's the way the artistic processes are designed. So as we developed lessons for arts integration, uh, like we're going to go through today, we actually paralleled them into the 5E model. Some people call it the learning cycle, uh, which is not new. Uh, it was uh, developed about, I think, about 20 years ago, originally, not by me. <laughs> it's been um, tried and tested, and it works. We know it works because it's been used with millions of, of students across the, the nation. But it's really just an inquiry-based model, right? So that's why, that's why you see it in STEM scopes. That's why you see it in science. But it's really just starting with the teacher back here, right? It's starting with the engaging and exploring and then getting into the practice. So it just flips that direct instruction model. It's not I do, we do, you do. It's engaging and exploring to go into the explain being done by the students, the elaboration, putting it to a new use, and then the evaluation, how can I do it in my own way? So it really parallels that practice develop faster. So just to kind of get the big picture of how all of this sort of theory and research works together, and how we put it, it really, the arts and the sciences are one and the same in terms of how we learn them and how we engage with them. So that's why we chose this particular, this particular model. Questions, thoughts on that? <coughs> yeah. Yes, yes, they're all, they're all connected on the agenda. Yeah. No, I just want to add that uh, many years ago when I did my different class, uh -huh. it was a, it's a relationship with what you're showing us. Mm -hmm. For example, for engagement, I always have, need to have a motivation uh -huh. for my students. Uh -huh. What would be the motivation of teaching, for example, in uh -huh. And then the explore would be the objective, right. what I'm going to teach. And then the practice and develop and the master is the evaluation. Uh -huh. What do they do? How do they uh, show me what they learn? Right, exactly. So I just want to be, so we, we were very purposeful in how we developed these lessons to start with the exploration and to start with the students. We don't want the arts to ever be about, and STEM either, we don't want it to be about everybody do it like me. Like that's not the goal. There's a place for direct instruction. Maybe if I'm gonna teach 
exactly how to use, do that watercolor technique. I do, we do, you do, right? But then when I'm actually creating and building identity through the arts and these, these multifaceted lessons, we want to start with that engagement and explore. And this is what gets kind of interesting because we were talking about this idea of <laughs> the concrete and the pictorial and the abstract, right? So we really explore, right? Engage and explore in order to explain in order to elaborate. We go from the um, concrete to the pictorial to the abstract, right? Rather than starting with the abstraction. So since I have a lot of, um, since this is elementary teachers, I think you guys understand what I mean by this. But it's the same idea in the arts. We want to have that exploration um, in a really concrete way with our bodies in order to get to that that abstraction of the ideas. Okay. And then we have this conversation, the artists, the artists, the artists, <laughs> over here in the corner. We have this conversation, how, you know, we developed a lot of curriculum, and without even thinking about it, there were times when the arts content came first in that 5 progression, and there were times when the core content there isn't like one fast rule, right? It just depends on what your objective is and how you're going about. Sometimes you might need to present that core content first and then layer in the arts. Sometimes you might need to present the arts content first and then apply it in the core content, right? But this is a different way of thinking than what I see in many, many places, which is do the lessons and then, oh, then maybe we'll do this art thing over here that sort of relates. Or, well, yeah, we had arts integration because I did my math lesson and then they drew it at the end. That's not really what, that's not totally what we're talking about. It's a step, but there's, there's a little more to it. And then sometimes those, the arts might serve as a review of the content, and sometimes they might serve as a preview of the content. So it might help us come into the content or it might help us come out of the content, right? It might help us come in, it might help us come out. You know, there's just different ways of looking at it. Yeah, Jess. I also think talking about the con, like, the arts can be part of our summative assessments. Mm -hmm. Like, often the art pr produced or the art, the final piece that we're creating, that's that final way that we look at it to see if they have mastery of content. Absolutely. And that, I think that, that comes into play, I mean, we're all nodding because I think yeah. you agree yeah. that like that final thing can often be that as well. And the ultimate goal is that students, there's many and varied ways that students can express their understanding of the content. There doesn't have to be one assessment, right? So if they choose to, if you offer some options, you can show me what you know. How are you gonna show me what you know? You can use watercolors to create a piece to show me what you know. You can write a poem to show me what you know what you know, you can create a dance to show me what you know. You know, there's you can create those those really clear options. Yes. I want to just reflect back to the group and Brenda and I were talking about this at the end of the day. When we did the cave painting symbols mm -hmm. and then you got on your feet, you did locomotor, axial locomotor, I'm like, oh my gosh, they got it. They that was like a culminating activity that uh -huh. showed me you all understood beginning, middle, end. You all understood locomotor axial. You understood abstraction. Mm -hmm. It was like such a moment of, oh, they were able to do everything all at once. If we'd done that first thing in the morning, you guys would have looked at me like, wait, what? So it was such a nice way for me to be able to assess. And I just wanted to note that so that you all saw that too. It was exactly. amazing. Yeah. Thank exactly. You. So these are the kind, these are the questions that we ask ourselves as we're developing these lessons, but also as you're developing your own as you are, are growing in this way. So I'm just gonna put one more layer into this, and you all can go back and review a little bit as you go on, but this idea of healing informed arts. Um, so there's this nerve, you know, it starts up here, and it goes all the way down our spine. It's called, it's called the vagus nerve. And it helps send uh, information to all the different parts of your body. 
And when that nerve is in flight, fight or flight, it's in its parasympathetic um, module, and it you know, all these terrible things happen, like it makes your, um, it constricts your bronchi, it stimulates digestion. Um, actually, sorry, the other You're backwards. Here. This is the good side, this is the bad <laughs> side. So here's where it dilates the pupils, it inhibits salivation, salivation it accelerates your heartbeat, it, di it dilates your bronchi so you can't breathe as well, it hurts your digestion, so your stomach hurts, right? So stress coming down through this nerve does all these things to your body. Um, and our kids come in with all different types of stress. We could do a whole session on this, but we're going to talk about that later um, in other sessions. But I just wanted you to be aware that this polyvagal theory of trying to calm that nerve uh, helps us with um, ethnic and race-based stress. Um, and uh, that, that working through this polyvagal theory sheds light on the role of these relationships can play in supporting a healthy and balanced nervous system and mediate reactivity associated with ethnic and race-based stress. So our kids not only have environmental stress and uh, things that have happened like right now or that they live with over time, but they also have um, stress that um, many of them are basically kind of born with that has ethnic and race-based. So there's a whole, whole other session on that that we could do another time. But the, our, our, our theory is that the arts help to work that polyvagal nerve and, and um, eliminate some of that stress as a way to heal. And this is what I was talking about yesterday. This is the psoas muscle. Everybody say psoas. Psoas. Yeah, that's a good word. I have to do that like I do with kids. Um, so that's the one that's under, it's back here. It's like your hip openers. You know, so that's why in yoga we do so many hip openings. And I feel like as I learned about this more, I realized that when I'm presenting or when I'm in a time of like stress, I do a lot of that. And I think it's because like my body is opening up that, that muscle. So this is referred to as the fight or flight muscle. So we talk about that nerve, that's the fight or flight nerve. This is the muscle. Our bodies store unprocessed energy of our physical and emotional trauma in that muscle. So I don't know about you all, but this year of so much sitting and so much like, I don't know, if you, have you guys felt it in your hips? I have felt it in my, in my hips a lot, like way more than any other year. Um, and it relates to that muscle. So when the body is under chronic stress or anxiety, this muscle contracts. And shaking, shaking and tapping practices help to loosen up that muscle. Mm -hmm. So the simple act of what we just did, the tapping, and then going into the meditation, or a shaking, and then going out, do you guys ever do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that thing with kids? Oh yeah. That shaking before going into the meditation or into the into the choir did some help. So our dance activities were <laughs> running around and doing all of that in the morning and then centering it can really open up that psoas muscle. So there's science to this work as well um, for the emotions. So that was a lot of information. <laughs> it's awesome. But I just wanted to give you guys like the big picture of the social emotional benefits, the physical mental health benefits, and the social justice elements for why we do our examination. Questions, thoughts? Yes? Um, not a question. I just also want to say that our goal this summer over at this table is to put the social justice standards and the SEL competencies in all of the lessons so that you can look at them. Um, I know in the one that Peggy and I are doing, I went and added the social justice standard for today so you can kind of see what that looks like. But I just want to say that out loud to like, check on it by the end of the summer again because it should be there for your grade level. Okay. So we need a little five minute and then we'll get into the lesson. Is that yeah. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you. Did we take time to say where it is? In space? No, but where you can find it. Oh, no, we didn't. Of course not. <laughs> we never did. <do. laughs>
Well, Wait, y'all have to do that at the beginning of your plan. Okay. <laughs> Why can't you eat them when they're too ripe? Yeah, that's better. too much sugar or something. It was awesome. It's better for you when they're. It was awesome. Big, big picture. I love that. No, it's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. You did great. Have you read Gail Parker's book? Oh my God, yeah. it's intense. I did just get this new book. It's definitely intense. That I've been loving all about. Antibias and Teresa's. She does TED Talks. I just got it and I'm super excited. Really cool. Awesome. Um, she did the TED Talks about. Um, you know, the other thing that helps psoas? It's about all of the psoas. Yes. Oh, all of that. Do you see the picture? No, she's adapted. She's Jewish. Yeah. 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 So she, she has like a lot of like, yeah. so she has a lot of research. Yeah. Yeah.
that align with theater, visual arts, and dance throughout your scope and sequence for each grade K through five. Yep. We're going to show that to you at the end where that is in the Google Drive. The lessons that we're exploring today are linked in the agenda, so you can see that. So as we go through this, Peggy and I, obviously theater and dance have a lot of overlap. And Peggy even said that, y'all yeah, were talking about it yesterday, we were like, how does Tableau connect to this, right? And especially my, the, our friends that we've done it virtually, right? We've done so many Tableau activities online and in person before that, so we're going to kind of explore some activities today where I'm going to do a theater activity and then Peggy's going to show you the dance version of it or a dance modification if you will. So in the dance folder and then we're going to do something very similar with visual arts after our break. So as we go through this we're going to pause often and say how can you apply this in your classroom. The activities are K-5 friendly but this lesson in particular is for fifth grade, but a lot of the less, a lot of these like standalone seeds can be taken all the way. We chose it specifically for that, so it is a point. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Any questions, comments, concerns, emotional outbursts? You good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, you handled it. You handled it. All right. So, repeat after me. Say a cue. A cue is a signal. Is a that tells you what to do. That tells you what to do. It is, right? And you all know what cues are, right? When you're driving and you see a red light, it means? Oh, beautiful. When you're driving and you see a green light, it means? And yellow means? Oh, see, yes. Kids have different answers, too. It's just hilarious. So, um, right? So we all have cues in our lives. So the bell rings. We know what that means. It's recess. It's lunch. And school's over. There are lots of cues that are like, so I'm going to give you a cue, because as actors, we have cues all the time, right? For my new name, Allison. Sorry, they're new still, so I'm I got her if you want to have a reference. <laughs> <laughs> so Allison, would you help me with something? All right, so we you stomp your foot right there really hard? Ow! Ow, okay. <laughs> Allison. Not on my foot, okay? Really hard, like lift it up and stomp really hard right there. Ready? teach cues to kids because the way that we talk about it is Allison are you stepping on my foot? No. No. Over here you all can see very clearly that she wasn't but I bet about right there it looked okay. Mm -hmm. Like it was like oh Allison not listen and follow directions right so often as actors we are making different choices to and we have to take cues and change them to act accordingly. Sometimes it's a light change, sometimes it's a line, sometimes it's a hat falling from the rafters, and that's our cue. We also have cues in dance. They're the same. It could be a music lyric, it could be a light shift, it could be a pot of gray, could be. I know dance things. <laughs> um, so, we're going to play a game called Freeze, Sneeze, Please. So, when I say go, what do you think you're all going to do? Go. Yeah, you're going to walk around the room, right? When I say freeze, what do you think I'm going to do? You're going to freeze, right? Just exactly as you are. Great. When I say knees, you're going to put your hands on your knees. Good. When I say sneeze, you're going to silently act out a sneeze. However it is. They can be different. That's mine. But with mask, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> read the same way. I haven't done that with the mask, right? Whatever it is, yours can look any way you want, but it should be frozen still, all right? So we're going to just do those four cues. Go, freeze, sneeze, oh, I like. And then please. And then I would like a bag. All right, sorry. So this can be please. It can be standing. It can be lots of things. All right? Yes, any, any sort of pleading. Right? Like, it can be sneaky pleading with a finger press behind your back. Right? Like, whatever it is, freeze, sneeze, please, and go. You ready? Yes. So when you sneeze, are you acting out the sneeze? Yes, but it's a frozen picture. So you're starting to sneeze close. So a sudden sneeze is a very dramatic. I love it. So I just want to know right So you, it should just be frozen. Okay. Whatever piece of the, you could, every time I say sneeze, you could do a different picture of yourself. Maybe we get a progression. Yeah. 
character trades, right? And free seems please, it's just because it runs with free, so you can do anything. Right? Stop, pop, lock, pop, 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 where you could create an order and teach it in like a mind device. Yeah. Awesome. What this teaches in theater is it teaches pantomime skills. Right? All of a sudden, I have all of you creating physical stories using your bodies in a really low stakes way. And I'll be, I bet you have fun, right? Because <laughs> like it's fun to like run around laughing like you're scared by a bee. But when we were talking about the different types of activities, the activity that drama we're sharing today is we have a stack of a lot of skills to be able to get to integrating content with hands on. So this is an activity I would do with kindergarten through kids. Obviously changing the specificity of the movements for the age range, but this is how I would use this activity to scaffold the skill of hands on. Cool. Any questions? All right, we're gonna like do one of these like pivot bits. I'm gonna send it over to Peggy to show you an iteration of the same type of game in dance world. So you all did amazing freeze dances yesterday. And oftentimes I would say dance, or I'd say go, and then I'd say freeze. We're going to abstract weather patterns, right? So who can tell me about some extreme weather that we experience here in Southern California? Drought, wind, wind, wind. Earth, earth, heat, earth, earth, earthquakes, fire. fires, hail, hail. A little bit of snow. That's extreme. <laughs> really extreme. Heat waves. Heat waves. Lots of different kinds of rain. What kind of rain do you see sometimes? Dirty rain. Torrential rain. Yeah. What did you say, Nana? Dirty rain. Oh, I said dirty rain. Oh, dirty rain. I was so funny with the masks. I'm like, the voice is coming from there, but I didn't see the lips move. That's She's so like, funny. You got in trouble. That was so <laughs> the right. Christie's please was a whole different thing that I wasn't expecting. Right. Oh my goodness. Torrential rain. What did you see the other day? It was like really odd. It was like this mist, mist. mist. Yeah. Right. It was like it was hanging just right. very in the air. So yesterday we talked a lot about movement qualities and the energy or force or dynamic of a movement. So if Jessica is asking us to pantomime win, what would we do? Right? If I'm asking you to pant to dance wind on two levels, high and low, with a turn, what would you do? Right. Oh. <laughs> yes, we would. So we are going to do a freeze dance, which is just like we did, but instead of walking, we're going to be gliding. So gliding is like this. It's like you're lighter than air and you're just reaching, right? So you're walking, but you're dancing. So everybody try to glide with me into the center of the circle. Glide. Use your knees, glide. glide. Oh, that's excellent. Love that guy. Glide. So it's almost like you are becoming the weather, right? You're moving through variability in weather. I'm going to start us out with a hard hail. Now, this is your dance space all around here. As you know, we're staying on this side of the table. Remember that your personal dance bubble is side to side front and back, and we do not crash into anyone, even when we're gliding, all right? So we're going to glide, and then we're going to do hard hail. So start out by gliding. Go ahead. And go. Glide, 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 changing to hard hail.
Freeze. Love that. Changing to win. Changing to win. Glide to win. Glide. Win. High level. Low level. High level. Low level. Pretty solid in the shape of a win. <laughs> Next, we have tornado. Tornado. Glide with a tornado. Lots of activities that we would not do this way 
connect with your students. So again, I, when you look at the lesson plans, they're big because it's not intended for like one 45 minute lesson, right? It's something that you can put over the course of your entire unit of study, all right? So we're gonna do a little transition. So I'm gonna take a little break dance from Karen. So can everyone just tap their arm? Just gonna do a little transition. We're gonna add a little bit Tap your cheeks and your head. Good, neck, shoulders, all the way down to your body, your legs, your hips, your knees. Whatever feels good. Take it down. Maybe your butt, right? We've been whatever, right? Here's all the last one your butt. Awesome. Good. That's my letter B. My letter D. <laughs> Awesome. So this activity, we can sit down on the floor, but if that seems too hard, we can stay standing. Point down if you want to sit on the floor, and it's okay. I heard been in chairs all day yesterday, so you can yeah. All right, maybe we'll stay standing then. You can stay standing. So this is one of my favorite games, and what's great about it is it's silent. So if you're ever needing a brain break for your brain, this is a great activity that you can do. Right? We all know, especially with elementary. Sometimes you're like, man, do you know what I need? Five minutes. And this is like silence. So the way that it works is we're going to play a game called Invisible Ball. So have you ever turned your hand over there? If that's okay. And let's like scooch the circle a little bit. This way, so okay. Yeah, just next to Morgan. Perfect. And Karen, can you move over here? Thank you. Sorry. I've heard you what?
Little things that you can do with it as well is you can take something and be like, oh, look, I have something in the middle of the room. It's right there. But look. Oh, no. The wall. Oh, look now. Oh, no. Can you get? Oh, okay. Negative coverage. Oh, no. Right? And then you can put it in teams and they have to break down the wall. You can pantomime, you can get whatever that is. Right, there's a lot of things you can do. Right, where you're like, okay, we're all gonna push. Are you okay? Will you come and push with me? Will you come and push with me? All right, are you ready? So you're gonna pop your hand like this, pop, pop, and then you're gonna push with all your strength. Get us 
to pantomime. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? That's a great question. So make sure that you understand how to apply it in your classroom and in a realistic way. I'm just thinking if it's an like SEL mindfulness thing where you tune in by rubbing your palms together and then you um, faster and faster. When you go like that, you feel the energy. Mm -hmm. And so I did it online with the kids and I said, okay, now, you know, like cover the size of the energy ball is, and then we passed it to each other, like on the screen. Wow. I love it. That's cool. <laughs> nice. My favorite is like with kids. Here, pass it to me. My favorite with kids. Will you pass me yours? Right? Can we pass me yours? Are you ready? Yeah. Right? And kids are like, oh my gosh. You're she so shaking struggle. I'm not doing anything right now. <laughs> my kids are like, and then you try, oh, oh man, hold on. Alright, like, my kids, it's so funny to me that like, they, their imaginations are not judging me. <laughs> like they, they don't limit it. So there's so much fun you can do with pantomime that involves no props and no planning, and that's my favorite part. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Like you can come in and be like, oh man, we just read a book. Let's do an invisible ball about the objects in that book. Right? And then you can pass around the objects and identify different people, which is a great modification for gifted or ELL. Like you can you can have different students be the ones in charge of changing the content. And all this is written down for you in the lesson. Cool. All right. Do you want to switch? We're going to do this, and this one is an abstraction. I'm, I'm, I'm still in my head about the whole silence thing. So, you know, dancers are usually silent. We often use music, but we don't often use verbal cues. Um, but for this one, we're going to create some qualities for the ball. And, and Jessica sort of uh, did a nice bridge transition to this. So I've been ripping off this idea of the weather patterns. So this now is uh, the invisible ball has different temperatures. An ice ball, a snow ball, a fire ball, a sun ball. Okay, so go ahead and find a partner. It could be a person right near you. Right? Okay. Okay. So we did not do this yesterday, but um, as you all know, mirroring is a standard uh, dance activity. So I'm going to call the ball, so it'll be ice ball to start. So let's say I'm Denise and Karina, we each have an ice ball. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be watching the other person with your peripheral vision, with your own vision, and you're not gonna have a leader or a follower, you're trying to collaborate. So, you, so you're doing together. So go and get your ice ball, right? We're together, each other, each other, each other, okay. each other. Okay. And then you decide how you're gonna mirror this. So Karina, look at me. You're gonna be like doing something like this. Denise, come with me. Oh, okay. oh, 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 oh. come with me. You're okay. mirroring one. And you're like, oh, we're so cold. And you're ripping off each other. You're you're becoming the same. You're having the same experience. You might lead. You might lead. Go slow, but show that this ball is making you really cold. So it's a mirroring exercise with the ball, with abstraction of movement and different levels. So I'm not telling you who's leader and who's follower. I'm just going to give you the temperature of the ball. Um, right. Question. Um, comment. If it's please, okay. please. So in theater, when I, I when I lead an activity very similar, it's literally called mirroring. It's in the launch units for each grade. Yep. Um, I say the slower you move, the more successful you will be. Mm. The slower you move, the more successful. You will be. That's a great cue. And it doesn't matter. Nope. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I'm sorry. I just don't no, Thank you for that. <laughs> so know that your levels are really important in a dance mirror, right? And you can turn away from each other. But keep eye contact. Yeah, right? And there's no talking, right? There's no talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. Okay, so we're starting with an ice ball. Face your partner. We're together. You each have an ice ball. Look at your partner. You're mirroring each other. You're having the same experience. Switch. 
fireball. Right? That's pantomime. 
right. to communicating information silently. Right. It's so interesting because they really blend. They're really on a continuum of, just like we were saying, the tableau leads into dance sculpture, the sculpture leads into tableau, pantomime leads into movement, movement is into pantomime. So we wanted to show how they were, they're very, very related, but they also have distinctive qualities. And I want to do one like really, really, really fast thing. Turn to your partner. You can do it, Karen, if you want. Just really, really quick. And um, the person with longer hair, can you put your hand up in the air? <laughs> this is perfect. Great. And can you, the person with longer hair, put your hand straight out like you're giving a high five straight ahead? Good. And the person who has shorter hair, I want you to imagine that there's a string that about a foot away. Oh, no. Your forehead. Oh, no. It's your forehead. <laughs> this string from your forehead to their hand intact. In person, with longer hair, you are in control. And I'd like you to try and move it. There we go. All right, all is fair in love and war, so let's swap. So let me get it. Switch that. Swap and begin. Things. And then you come back and do this. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yes. Often, sometimes I'm like, and then you teach about science, and then you come back and do this art thing. So have you ever look at it? Because you're the experts in your content, and usually they're virtual learning resources, and we went virtual, we went through and like found videos to help teach content, but you're always the experts on your content, and we don't pretend to be the experts on what you teach. Um, but we're trying to show you ways to incorporate the arts into different pieces of it. So I'm going to break you into three groups within your group. You're going to only have like five minutes. Yeah, six minutes. Okay, where you're going to pick a problem, pick a solution. It doesn't need to be like, we're going to raise the temperature of the globe. Right? That, you can't do that with the four of you. What is something that the four of you could do? All right? And you're going to create a silent pantomime. So moving slowly, all of these skills that we've learned, right? If it's more abstract, because that's how your brain works, great. If it's more concrete, great. All right, so I'm going to model how I break students into groups. So when I walk around, I'm going to give you a number. You can put it on your forehead. One, two, three. 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 two. Okay. All right, so can all the ones come over here, please? Can all the twos go over there, please? And can all the threes come over here? It's my favorite way to break them in because everyone's walking around blind. <laughs> Beautiful. So you have a group of three, a group of four, a group of four. Pick a problem. That's your first job. When you pick a problem, put your hands straight in the air. Ready? Pick an environmental problem and go. No, no, no. Oh, oh, perfect. Okay. Beautiful. Pick a solution that you all can. Perfect. What's your problem? Beautiful. Pick a solution for what those are. You can help that. Beautiful. Oh, good. So your problem is anybody come up with your solution? So how are you going to show them how to show how you clean it up? So decided on three of you, the four of you. Nice. All right. Too much trash, right?
each grade launch unit, there's a whole thing about the conversation that we can probably talk about with an audience. An audience is silent, an audience is supportive. An audience is searching for the answer, for the prompt that we're giving. So I think our prompt was an audience is right, silent, searching, supportive. So you can clap at the end, you can laugh if something's funny, but you should be searching for the answer, right? They have the same prompt as you. Environmental problem and solution, so let's search and see what we can find. So, actors, actors, are you ready? Actors, are you ready? Yes. yes. One second. That's okay. That's why we asked. Actors, are you ready? Yes. Oh, hold on. I need a nice little. Actors, are you ready? Yes. Audience, are you ready? Yes. yes. Oh, my God.
react different ways, just like your students. So sometimes if one art form out of the three that we're exploring resonates with you, know that the other two probably resonate with other students as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So having, like the more we can stack these, um, these standards, the more rigorous these activities are, and the more that it doesn't have to feel like it doesn't take a year to do this. Right? We did that in 10 minutes. Yeah. But it's because we scaffolded up the skills of how to do pantomime before we did it. If I had just been like, you're doing this, you would have been like, what, what, what do you mean silently tell a story with my body? I can't do that. So that's how we talk about that difference of sometimes you start with content and sometimes you start with the art. Here you start with the art to connect to the content. And because of all the dance we did yesterday, you guys were moving in a really beautiful way. I mean, the waves and the ocean and the animals and the beach. I was like, they're dancing. Yeah, and it was in your classroom in different ways. It, it connects. So, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe it's a little bit hard for the students and uh, all the suggestions that you're giving us, all these ideas will be a healing solution to incorporate the students instead of thinking that uh, everything is going to be like back to normal right away, all these activities heal and uh, incorporate our goals for yeah. next year, little by little, making the, the, the kids feeling that everything is okay and yeah. we are doing this for them. Yeah, yeah. completely. Well, and like when we talk about like even like the social justice standards and then the SEL competencies, right? The relationship skills that have to happen to do this. The self-awareness, the responsible decision making, <laughs> I, uh, the social awareness to be able to be aware of the, your classmates and how they might feel about a certain issue. Like you're hit, like this is one of those activities that if you do the little bit of work to get to it, you're creating this like rigor skyscraper of like boom, 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 boom. Look at everything we just did in this 20 minute activity. Excellent. Thank you. Lesson plans I found out about this woman named Jill Pelto, P 
He is in tall, E-L-T-O, and Karen is looking for a um, slide presentation that I created about her work. Um, she's actually a scientist and an artist, like kind of both equally. And she started gathering data on different, um, like temperature changes in different environments, uh, facts about animals and, you know, how many were, uh, we were losing. And she packed this data into her artwork with these graphs that she makes. Okay, oh good, I'm so glad you that up because my description of it would not even be good enough. So if you, you can see like there, she used all of these graphs about the change in temperature, or the decrease in temperature, to create this image of the melting ice, right? And so she's got like numbers on here, but I mean the work is just really, I find it really beautiful in a kind of scientific way, yeah. So this is the same thing with endangered species. There's a, th these are graph points. So if you had your kids like learn about something and create, and they don't, there aren't very many. It's not like they have to go out and, you know, do massive amounts of research to get all these numbers to make a chart of something and then create an image that relates to that information. So here's another one about melting ice. Uh, this is probably has something to do with how much land has been burned or the increase in temperature on the planet. It could be, I don't really know. Yeah, forest fires, pollution. This is probably loss of fish and water temperature change. Um, yeah, as we all know, like polar, those are foxes, they're not bears, right? But, oh, yeah, Arctic animals are Losing. And also the earlier, earlier uh, paintings or drawings, she had those lines, those grid lines. What, what were they for? Go back here. The Which very, one? The, first the very first three. one? Yeah, one of those. those. Well, you, you know, I think it's, it's just a repetitive pattern to make the piece look interesting rather than have this be blank. Okay. But, um, and it helps to find the numbers, right? I don't, I don't really know. I okay. mean, I, my guess would be it's just to juxtapose the natural image with the mathematical information. But you did that research as part of the practice element of this, of whatever the climate problem was, and you actually graphed the research that you gathered, then you right. would use that same graph paper and create an image that represents okay. what the data uh, represents. Yeah. Right, and you could create this part of it first on the whole thing, and then superimpose the natural image over that. So I think there's just maybe one Why does that look so blurry? Okay, well, whatever. Oh, with the yeah. Oh, look, that looks like our pantomime, friends. It does. <laughs> right, but every, if you've noticed, every one of her pieces has like that graphic, the, the graph imagery of, of, the, of the statistics, and I don't know. This one, I can't, I feel like my eyes are no, it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy, okay. But again, I'm pretty sure this is about the ice melting, glaciers melting. Okay, so can you just show that? Um, so it's in fourth grade, unit six. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, we don't really need to spend it. I don't know. Anyway, so <laughs> it's funny how we took these lessons, we made the units, and then people did, you know, Denise did her work with visual arts with the lessons. Jessica did her work with theater with the lessons, and now we're taking those and Peggy's layering and dance on the existing lessons rather than creating a whole other section of lessons. So, also have to But anyway, that was okay. an important Yeah, you can look at it. I mean, there's all kinds of links to different websites that give you information about global warming and climate change and, you know, and the Jill Pelto, that slideshow that I just showed you. So, um, you could, if you wanted to do a visual art thing instead of integration, instead of, or in addition to the theater and the dance, you could blend them all together somehow. Yeah. You could dance the graph, right? <laughs> you could create a story of it, right? If Absolutely. Somebody wanted to so. Absolutely. Sam the whale wanted to live a happy and healthy life, but right. the net got in his way, so exactly. Susan from Pasadena. Or the water was too warm or yeah. didn't move or something, yeah. yeah. Okay, so can you just go to the ledger art on them? 
Oh, are we talking about it? Well, oh, I don't know. Are we talking about it? Okay, fine. I was like, whoa, that's a big thing. Woo! Okay. But, um, all of the bases lessons have slideshows embedded. So you can yeah, all of Yeah, I know. I don't know if those are going to go. It's right in there. Um, all of the other roads are in there. So. Yeah. so don't worry about that. But we can take a little break. So that was the climate change integrated lessons. And um, it's, like you said, it's linked on the agenda, the actual lesson plan. So, um, and at the end, we're going to show, like, the launch units yeah. and all those bits. All that stuff. Yeah. Okay. All righty, so let's take a little break. Oh my god, that's beautiful. You see how like I can this one oh is way above and beyond. Right? Oh my god. Oh my god. We started out, I, you know, I said, it's so okay. interesting to see you. Like, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Where's your eyes out? I don't know where it is. Oh, my God. I'm not going to see you. Okay, I'm going to do that. Oh, my God. Let's do that. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my that looks really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I was very surprised how so nice it yeah. came out. This is not one that I'm like, kind of like the one that already made, but like, you know, oh my God. Yeah, so I'm just like, get it? Considering that I, like, are you still in Washington? Yeah. yeah. Like, I've been at No, I mean, like, this day, they said that it's like, you know, Rayman is a little bit But these are, like, these are not. I mean, it looks nice because it's in the right, it, but right. like, this like it, it was so dark. Yeah, I'm and telling you, everybody does look at this guy. Everybody, the grown-ups, the kids. I really enjoyed it. I had the music on. I had a string of music, and I was doing it. I think I did a booster picture. I know. Oh, it was just so nice. So, are you doing it? They were all saying, I don't know if you're saying, okay, send them all. Now you're going to send them. Thanks for 
share me those. That's great to know. I'm so no, glad. That you're that. all good.
Did we put it in the story? Yeah, we put it in the story. Yeah, we put it in the story. Yeah, we put it in the story. Yeah, it's doable. And you call it Chi Chi? The Foundation got it. Probably. Is it that I have to change it? Still, still living there. I wish I did. It's visual. No, because he was up there. And I was downstairs. And I was downstairs. And he was very easy to hear. And he's like, Miss Nichols is the second. And she's like, Well, it's not a good thing. And I just and you know,
um, with the dance material, then I'm showing you how to do visual arts with the dance material that you did yesterday, right? So kind of doing it um, a little bit. Well, no, it's not bad. It's just a different order than I think. Um, so we chose this lesson, this ledger art lesson, and mostly when I say to people ledger art, they have no idea what I'm talking about. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. I'm going to explain it to you. Um, while Karen's pulling it up. So this is a fifth grade lesson. Um, it's uh, integrated, it's visual arts integrated with social studies about Native American cultures, um, not just in California, but I know that some of you, your, your standards specifically focus on what's happening in California, but you could totally make this work with that because we're going to start out talking about that a little bit of ridiculous background on art making of native cultures really all over the world, not just on this in North America. But, um, uh, I'm sorry, I have to find it. It's because it's my iPad. It's just so I have to, it just takes some It's okay, it's just so much more interesting if I have images to show you. Yes, I will. I'm just not that interested. Thinking about where to get it from. Okay. So, all right, so, Karen's looking for that. Um, I'll just start talking about it, and then I'll show you. So, um, I don't know, has anybody ever gone out hiking and looked at pictographs or petroglyphs? Okay, a few of you. So, um, pictographs are, more, when you see them, they're probably more recently made than petroglyphs are images that are carved onto rock, carved or abraded, which means scratched or scraped or hacked into the rock. So they're physical, actually, right? They're physically carved onto the rock. Pictographs are images that are painted onto the rock. So if you're seeing pictographs, most likely they are newer than the petroglyphs because the, the pigments don't last forever, right? Although the pigments, some of these pigments are, you know, depending on where they are, if they're in a rock shelter or where they don't get a lot of rain and sun, they can last for hundreds of years, maybe even thousands. It's very difficult to date rock art because we don't, we can't scrape at it without ruining it. So, um, a lot of times there's really no way to know. Um, we have the, uh, stories from and information from present day native people who can say this, you know, we've been told generation after generation that this particular image is about whatever, you know, hunting or uh, finding water or a particular religious ceremony. They're about all different kinds of things. But you can take hikes here locally. There's a cave paintings up near Santa Barbara, Chumash Indian cave painting. It's not very exciting to look at it because you have to look at it through a gate because they gated off the, um, the opening to the cave because people went in there and, of course, put graffiti over it and ruined it. But um, petroglyphs, you can see out near Barstow, there are some. I mean, really, they're all over. So it's, it's thousands of year old art making that we can you know, look at and look at images of them online. I showed them the two videos yesterday, Denise, the cave painting and the Terrence Gordon. Okay, cool. That's kind of like one extreme to the other time, right? So, but in between, people are still making art in all kinds of ways. And really, one of the things I find fascinating about this topic is that, like, if you look at rock art, like petroglyphs or pictographs in, in Africa, in Mexico, in Peru, in you know, wherever, like all over the continent, all over the planet, they're kind of similar. It's really cool that people make images yeah. that look similar. It's what is that what you're looking for? Visual arts plus dance. Okay, so now, this is, is this, this is kind it's of also the, I know. All right, so, because, can I go to this? I guess not. What is it you move? It's in, let me look for it. No, it's okay, I don't know how to use this. Okay, which one do you want to show? Uh, let's start with the patch one. I'm going to Do you want to use my laptop, Karen? Uh, is it? Yes, because it's Mac. I can't connect my Chromebook into there. I'm sorry. It's the, um, it's the Mac. for some reason, the Chromebook is not there. Oh, okay. So I would connect my own, but my email is not in that Yep. It should be fine. This is connected on here. Yeah. It's going 
do a separate screen because of Fender. Mirror display, so we need the mirrors there. And I'll also turn on the mobile to make sure not disturb. So, you know, Yeah. 
Okay, so these are pictographs which are painted on. They often use like, um, a, you know, a rock ground like iron with animal fat or uh, obsidian with animal fat or something. So these are these are quite large. These are like probably 12, 15 feet high, maybe 20. I've seen these too. These are in Horseshoe Canyon, which is part of Canyonlands in Utah, and you have to hike like about seven and a half miles in the canyon to get there, and then seven and a half back. But it's totally worth it because they're really amazing. These are these are pictographs, but where is it? Yeah, it's in um, it's in it's called Horseshoe Canyon, which is part of Canyonlands National Park. They actually um, incorporated a little section just to preserve these pictographs because it's not connected. Like when you look on the map, there's Canyonlands and then there's little Canyonlands. And if we're talking about environmental problems, so I'm from Utah, there's been a lot of vandalization yeah, in the national parks. So that's like such a great thing that to bring in, um, okay, hold on, it's not a great thing. Um, no. And it would be a wonderful activity to bring in new sources, research it, talk about it, like there's a connection there. Right. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Please. There's, this is just another image. I think this one is also from Horseshoe Canyon. Because I saw the one she mentioned. I've seen this one too. <laughs> you can tell this is something I really enjoy and like to go out and look for. These are in Texas. Uh, these pictographs are in a place called Weco Tank State Park, which is just right outside of El Paso. And we had a climb in backwards on a, into a cave, like where the opening was about this high off the ground. And they're all in, there's all these different masks inside of there. Oh my god, it's so spectacular. And that's still open. Oh yeah. You just have to hike out there and find it though. It's not easy. The guy gave us the craziest directions. And for the rock that looks like a duck. When you see the rock that looks like a duck, go left. You're like, wait, wait, that looks like wait, now it looks like a duck. It's a, it's a, incredible that we found it. Here's another one. This one looks kind of like a dinosaur or something. Well, we know dinosaurs and people never existed at the same time. Yeah, so anyway, these kinds of images. I think this is actually Australia. Wow. Which I just threw in there because it's so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because there's a flag. No. <laughs> That's it. But it looks like the flag. Oh, yeah. All right. So, how'd you do that, Karen? Oh, it's okay. Okay. So, let's go back. I need to go to the plus on the other side. Okay, I got it. Um, okay, so, once um, Europeans came from wherever they were coming from, Spain or whatever, to this continent, right? Uh, Native American culture started to change. And one of the ways it changed was through the artwork. So people um, started making art uh, from rock art, they went to making art paintings onto buffalo hides. So I think, did you see any of those yesterday? Oh, okay. Um, Americans were exposed to like European style paintings on, you know, like canvas or something. But um, these started to be made like maybe I want to say 1700s or something like that. 
So this is a whole story. I mean, I read about this, but I don't remember what it is, but it's all about an encampment and a battle that happened and a buffalo, you know, run, they were chasing the buffalo. Um, and there's, you know, the Thunderbird here is a popular image. Hey, will you go back to that one for just a sec? Sure. So when we talk about how you can take different pieces of art and match them, right? Doing a pantomime or an ABC dance off of this yeah, is such a great idea. way to go, oh, here's all these skills that we've learned. How can we attach it to other content? Sorry. Yeah. I just, no, I, don't be sorry. Please, jump in anytime. <laughs> so, um, so buffalo hikes, right? So there's a whole bunch of these you can look at online. I've got all kinds of links on this uh, lesson plan. If you look at it, you can, you know, look to your heart's content at all, at all of these. Thing is, when we all know what happened to the buffalo, right? Uh, you know, European cultures came and just shot everything in sight, killed them all, and basically almost wiped out the whole buffalo population. And so there weren't buffalo hides available anymore like there used to be. So people started drawing and painting their stories onto what we call ledger paper. Okay, if you don't know what a ledger is, you're, you're younger than I am. <laughs> uh, people used to actually keep accounts, you know, for your, your expenses, either for your household or your business or whatever, um, in, a, in a book that's called a ledger. And I have one that I'm happy to pass around. Please be gentle with it because this is actually from 1903 that I bought at a swap meet in New Mexico. Um, and so Native people were, didn't, you know, and in, in, in these times, like when people started doing this work, they didn't, there wasn't just, you didn't go to the Rite Aid and buy a ream of copy paper, right? You could work, go to, to the Blick Art Store and buy a pad of drawing paper. Your paper was hard to come by. And so if you had used paper that you could get from somebody who was done with their ledger for the year, and you, then you just paint it on that. But this became a whole art form of people painting their stories, native people painting their stories onto this used ledger paper. So check this out, it's really cool. I have two of them actually. So did, it, did they paint right on top of like the numbers? Yeah, just oh, right over it. Just right over it. I see a connection to the other art you showed us earlier too. The graphs. The With the graphs. With the, oh, oh, really? yeah. with the Jill Belto thing. Yeah. That's a good point. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it actually, I mean, it adds to the piece, right? Yeah. I love this pad up here. I don't know if this is unfinished or what. But I think it is, because that's feet, right? Or are they just stirrups? I think they're stirrups. Um, because a lot of these are, you know, a lot of it, the work is about horses and the, the, the blankets and the saddles and the decorations and the painting on the horses because, of course, if you had a horse, um, you know, you could hunt, but you could run from other people and chase other people, and a horse is a, a, a very an advantage, big advantage. I thought when I saw that face, I was going to choose a little bit It could be. It could be. Well, and these are not signed, you know. Um, this work wasn't created like, oh, I'm going to be a famous artist and make this thing and put my name on here. It's more about, you know, telling the story of their culture. Now, a lot of people, when they look at this, they think it's two women, but it's actually two men. Um, these are like breech cloths. Men, you know, had a lot of adornments, uh, jewelry, these like porcupine quills. It depends on, you know, of course, where in the country you were because different types of beads and feathers are available in different geographic regions, of course. So, um, I think, oh, I think I have notes on this, but I can't get to them right now. I'll find it for you. I want to say these are Sioux, but I'm not positive. Black Snake Cheyenne, maybe this is. Anyway, again, a lot is about the horses. This is a kind of popular style. This guy, I think, has fallen off of this horse. Yeah, he's bleeding. Yeah. Exactly. It's clearly about a battle. Here's a gun, a shield. But they're very stylistic. Uh, like Karina was saying, these are things that you know a kid could draw, right? That you don't have to feel like you're you're going to have to draw something that looks exactly like it does in real life. 
This is also a man. Here's another battle. This was clear, you can see, I'm you know, pretty sure these are like Indian soldiers, right? Shooting from like a foxhole type thing that they've done. With, uh, yeah, kill. It's, you know, there's a lot going on in here. What does it say? Something fight, I can't remember. Like I said, probably if you look at this on your introduction of the right from me. Yeah, it could be. So then, um, around 1990, Native, you know, this art form kind of died out, right, as people became more, uh, what's the word? Um, when you take on somebody else's culture. Anyway. Colonized? Uh, yeah, that, well, you're all right. <laughs> None of those are the exact word I'm thinking of. Um, I'll think of it. But anyway. So then around 1990, people, Native, contemporary Native Americans went, well, that was kind of cool, that work that those people were doing. Let's start doing that again. So now this is, um, you know, I don't think this is Terrence Markey, which is the guy that you looked at yesterday. But this is a popular style to show, like, you know, traditional dress, like to kind of revitalize, right, this the Native culture and different um, practices. Okay, this is contemporary, these. but it's on old paper. Yes. So there's a market for that old paper again. Denise, and now you see the signature. Another connection I see on the one previous is um, costume design, which is a, like a huge section of theater, yeah. um, like the technical theater standards. Yeah. So again, if you're looking for rigor, maybe you do ledger paper art where they design a costume of a character from a story. That's a great story. idea. Like, I see a huge way to just, like, do, 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 connect all those dots. Yeah, and I love this, because, I mean, really, it could be, I mean, this these sleeves, it could almost be Japanese or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's so beautiful. Oh, and Denise, you have a question? Oh, oh sorry. sorry. I also wanted to ask, but mentioning about fashion, I was wondering, is there a resource also to be able to access some of these dresses or? To look at the actual dresses? Yeah. Maybe? Yes. Um, if you just Google, like, pick, pick any native tribe, right, yeah. like, um, the Sioux, 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 yeah, Sioux, Sioux, uh, the Cree, Lakota, and just Google, you know, Lakota women's, you know, uh, you know, way of, yeah, okay. traditional I dress. Have, um, I have a video in the dance launch, in the grade three to five dance launch that has, it's called regalia. And it's the Native American um, props that they use, some types of rattles, and also the uh, male and the female costuming, and then the Native American dances. So that's in the cultural dance and the launches, too. Yes, I think regalia specifically refers to dance costumes that yeah. people wear when they're doing, like, yeah. you know, a social dance or a religious dance. Exactly. So, did you have a question? Okay, I just want to talk a little bit about the connection between the, some of the people from the Mississippi or from the Southwest, mm -hmm. but then in the pre-Hispanic times, they have uh, trails with the Aztecs and with the Mayas. Absolutely. Because they, especially the J, uh, what is the one? That is made from, well, it's a, uh, found in the southwest. Mm -hmm. It was used in many of the masks mm -hmm. in Mexico, mm -hmm. in the, with the Aztecs and Mayas, mm -hmm. and also they uh, interchange for example, obsidiana, that is a yeah. rock yeah. that's black and it's Glass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. used for uh, different tools. Uh -huh. So it was this, uh, people don't know exactly, but uh, there is a connection between those cultures being uh, always active in trade. Absolutely, feathers, yeah. Feathers too, yeah. They found macaw feathers as far north as like Utah, I think, maybe even further. And macaws don't live in this, in this part of the world. They live in Mexico, and people would bring up those feathers and trade those feathers for a lot of So yeah, shells, we've, there's shells that have like, Seashells, right? I mean, we're not, you know, in Utah, there's no ocean. So people, you know, they know that there was a lot of trade between the different people. Yeah. Okay, so here's a nuts. This is again in the 1040s. 
And like I said, now you have a signature. So you see what people now care about. Now it's more, it's, now it's more of a commercial yeah. product. I mean, like I said, they're still making work about their experience. It's not to devalue them, but it's just to say, you know, we've got these more of an individual identity. And we can do, okay, we can do something like that with the shapes, like for teaching that people can make their own TV. Totally. Totally. Nicole. What do they use to paint that? This is, these are mostly done with colored pencil. Um, this one actually looks like it might be oil pastel or something. But they're not genuinely, gen generally painted. They're, they're mostly, the ones I've seen like in person in real life are, are colored pencil. So, you can see they get more elaborate. Sometimes they're done on maps because ledger paper is hard to come by. And also, ledger paper is a limited size. So if you wanted to make a larger piece, you know, and just FYI, if you go to AAA and ask for like old maps, they will give you, I've just gotten like a box. They just need old maps that like, or you know, they printed too many maps of, you know, Tennessee or something this year. If you want a particular place, it may be a little bit trickier. But. If you're just willing to take any old maps that they have laying around there, they'll give them to you. Yeah, I've gotten lots of them. Uh, that's it. Okay, so we're going to make our own ledger art today on a piece of map paper. Um, again, like I think Karen was talking about earlier, you know, you could say to a kid, you could make a story about something that's happened to you, or a story that you've learned about in your history lesson, um, you know, tell us something about what happened or who was, you know, what was going on. Were they getting along or were they not getting along? Was it conflict or was it cooperation? Was it, you know, is it past or present? Or maybe it's both. Maybe it's about a story that your grandfather told you. So you're, you know, translating that into something that you can relate to today. And also, of course, it depends on how old the kids are. But, um, so I tore out a bunch of pages from the Thomas Guide. Do you all remember Thomas Guide? <laughs> Some better than others. Um, so. Can I help you? Sure. Are you? Oh, you know what? I think some of these help. Little notes. No. Or just like put a stack on the table when people will be through. Their parents should this one. Tuck it away because they're really weak. We could also tear off So what I did is actually the I have, I have, I have a group I'll, I'll play for you in a minute. There's this, because I'm part free in here, and so I started looking up like, well, what, what kind of music do my people want? Yeah. So, oh, do y'all have some? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, great. Right. Oh, here's some more. Anybody else? Anybody <laughs> Nobody's sitting back here, right? Yes. Um, no, 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 style and tell us a story about something. It could be something historical, it could be something contemporary, um, it could be, you know, whatever whatever you're inspired to draw based on looking at this. Maybe it's about an animal that you're interested in, you know, these folks who really care about their horses and a lot of people today care about their dogs and cats. Maybe that's your, your connection to it, right? But, the animal that you care the most about today is a different animal that you still care about and take care of it and have a story about it. It could be about a conflict 
in a, a political conflict, you could bring in uh, uh, social justice topics by talking about what's not fair today, right? You looked at that battle, that piece of ledger art that was about battle, right? Between an ancient culture and a different ancient culture, I guess. Um, but a, 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 an invading culture, right? Art these people came in and invaded these people's land and basically just took over their whole lifestyle. What's happening today in that regard? Assimilation. That's the word I was trying to think of. <laughs> they, were, they were forcefully assimilated into European culture.
Yes. So there's a, just joint. a master. So there's just the joint. Just the joint. Just the joint. And then like we can add like a link to it in the folder, so it's not like this, a duplicate of a document. Do you know what I mean? Like a shortcut in oh, the yeah. folder? Like we can do that, but we should only have one because that's yes. a nightmare. <laughs> okay. Because like we were just like. And then once, it, once everything's in that folder, that's what I'll download it all and put it onto the. Awesome. So I'll organize it. That's the thing. Yep. So, so then I, so I can just add it to it. Yep. <laughs> yep, exactly. Just go right ahead. Because I can just add, you know, like the little one with the arrow. So like I can add a shortcut in the, in the dance folder. So it'll still be in the dance folder, but it's just linking to the one in the theater. So we're not having to hold it. That's perfect. Then this is how I put in the social justice standards. Do you like that? Do you want it to be integrated? Or do you want it to go separate? Do you like that up to like that? We just wanted to do it. And then underneath um, the yeah, SEL yeah, competencies. Yeah. And then just, are we doing? It could be like this. Now I should just look at it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then my other question is, do you want the SEL arts competencies or do you want the SEL competencies? Just the castle. Just list it. Just out of the, we'll cut the five and then delete what we're not. Yeah. Nice. I mean, there's the more specific um, points. The bullet points of the Yeah. She's like, keep it out of high. Yes. 
you could like you could you, you could you know low cost uh, cremation. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to get 
the two homes kind of divided right now. It's a little personal. Uh, so the green is one family, and the brown is another, and then you have the, the two siblings that are half green, half brown, which are my kids. And then, uh, this is the real personal story. Uh, so it's me, and my mother-in-law, and my daughter. Aww. And of course it's different. <laughs> okay, just a word from your art teacher. Don't let your students do this with the work on two sides of the page. Because then you can't look at both of them at the same time, right? And then also if you were going to frame it, they're both so good, what are you going to have to pick one, right? If you have to glue it down or something, one of them's one side's going to get ruined. Just give them another sheet of paper. Believe me, I'm all about recycling and reusing, but when it comes to making art, I try not to be too stingy with the paper because really, it's be, it would be so great. Like, can you imagine? If both of these were available to, for us to look at side to side. or hang on a wall next to each other, it would just make such a lovely presentation. So I appreciate your effort there, but just next time. You used to just, I could have given you another sheet of paper. I'm sorry I didn't catch you when you were turning it over. Okay. All right, anybody else? Salvador. Salvador. Okay, everybody's calling for yourself. Mine is a hair dress wow. from the Native Americans. Wow. And it's also a pictogram. It has uh, the roads going from east to west. It has the rivers going from north to south. It has the sky to the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the colors that integrate all kinds of people in different towns, in different oh. cultures. Wow. I love the dual meaning of the feathers. I mean, is that where you think you yeah. headdress feathers and then, but also nature? Wow, that's really a great, great image. All right, anybody else? Oh, Donna, you look like you're about to stand up. Come on. You weren't? Okay. I'm not the being stood up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alma was standing you up on the I thought the story behind it is probably better than the actual drawing. But what I, um, I was talking to Alma, we were talking about where I grew up and, you know, the way she grew up. She loves Brooklyn and I grew up in Brooklyn. So it got me, I drew a picture of the block I grew up. I grew up. Cool. And so, um, I wanted to connect it to Native American because I grew up almost like in a tribe in the sense of uh, these are the windows of the neighbors and we always had neighbors looking out the windows looking out for us. <laughs> so we never did anything wrong because we knew that somebody was watching us. And, <laughs> and, and they were all our aunts and uncles. They were everybody we called everyone on and on. So I tried. But then this is kind of interesting here. Because the access was salami, we had four stores on each corner, one on each corner. And this was the place you would go to get salami. It was an Italian grocery store. This one was Jewish, so we got the best little wish. <laughs> and this one was Portuguese, so we got the best ham. And then this one was a regular American store, we got the best salami. Wow. <laughs> so, when you went to the store, it. you always went to the store based on what your family wanted and then. And then this is on Car Beach on the roof because we used to do a lot. We still go put our blankets out on the roof and, and eat watermelon and watch the stars at night. Aww. And uh, that's how we also cross over to our neighbors. We used to go to the door here, go up to the third floor, cross over, go downstairs to the your uncle's house, your aunt's house. So, oh, God, that sounds like that's so much fabulous, doesn't it? <laughs> Good job. Right. Yeah, and I love the idea of using, like, depicting your own place overlapping onto a map, right, of another place. Because you're not there anymore, right? So it's, it's, it's kind of poignant in that way, but it's beautiful. What a beautiful story. All right, anybody else? Well, thank you all for sharing. Oh, Nicole? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Copyright, it's not my idea. Uh, so I copied this from somewhere uh, in the 
internet, so I just want to give whoever the drawing, the artist. But I like it. You know, the background, this is a map of a uh, natural, natural, uh, natural forest, and now uh, I, you know, I, I've been doing hiking. I've been going on hiking since the pandemic, and I really appreciate the trails around the Southern California. I moved out here uh, 25 years ago from uh, Chicago, and I, I didn't realize there are so many trails, and I really appreciate the nature. I, I really didn't have that love for the nature. Just growing up in Chicago, we never really went anywhere. But um, out here, there's so many places to go. So like, um, I've been reading a lot about how bad and then it wasn't blah, blah, blah. And the flip side of that is how the earth has been healing. And I've, I've seen a lot of pictures where, where like in Naples, you could actually see the mountains of um, Everest and all the such things and I'm like okay we really need to take care of our planet and so I and there were like two different colors and I, I was like okay yeah, I'm gonna choose this green side of this map and also I call I try to uh, pick like different uh, color different um, color of pants like you know the reason or like skin colors so I try to color this with like my Yellow, red, purple, whatever the color, you know, that's it. Very good. Nice. I love how um, you all were inspired by these different pieces and it went to like the stories of place and then the stories developed as you were drawn. So thinking about what that does in terms of giving a focus to the, to the artwork and then being able to come off of that. So we were coming at it through history, right? And then you created your own stories, which then could lead to a narrative, right? Which is very different than draw the picture that goes to the story you wrote, right? It's very different. Very different. Yeah. And one time I was doing a training at the Huntington, I don't know if some of you have been there, but um, a colleague of mine and I spoke about how artists don't always know where they're going when they start working. And I think people have an idea, it's kind of a myth, really, that you, know, you get this image in your head of a painting completely formed and then you just make it. But that's not how it works for most of us. We sit, you know, you sit down and you might just start with a color, you know, or an idea about a place. And, and, and actually, that work may end up to be about something completely different than what you started out to make. But if you just make it, and you just do it often enough, it's like anything. You know, it's like make, playing an instrument, or practicing dance, or theater, that you find you learn things about yourself, and you learn things about your craft, and, and you develop those kind of, you know, you learn your kind of trust your instincts, right? And follow those, those ideas wherever they may lead you. And it's usually someplace really interesting and cool. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's way more interesting than having an idea and then just making that thing. It's like, yeah, okay, well, I already saw that in my head, and there it is, so what's the big deal? Like, I didn't learn anything or go anywhere interesting, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. Right. Uh, Donna's pointing at you, Alma, like I think she wants you to share. <laughs> Do you want to share? I think I can share. Sure. Okay, great. I happen to actually get the page of the tongue sky for where we are right now. Oh, yeah, like awesome. Yeah. And it also includes where my school is, where we grew up in like three school, um, and where the school is that I'm teaching in the summer. And so I, I have myself kind of, I was looking at the images of the Native American people, and I saw that sort of the women were like two triangles, and the, the males were like in kind of more rectangular oh. style of clothing. So I, so I just um, put myself in there with, um, with some children. Aww. And with some arrows above their heads, so meaning that they're expanding in their minds. Mm -hmm. And with the brown shoes that were also brown here on the earth. Aww. Aww. Very nice. Yeah. 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 And, you know, let me just, I just want to point out, like, <laughs> look how interesting these look on this paper. Yeah. Right? Like, picture your drawing. No matter how beautiful it may be, on just on a plain white sheet of paper, not nearly as interesting, right? So it's kind of a cool idea. And again, you know, you could tear out, you could use a piece of newspaper, really, if you could find one. You know, find yeah. a newspaper we now. were talking about how at uh, like swap meets they sell big old things of postcards, which for students could be 
Like yeah. Kid, small size. It's kind of small. Is it too small? It's a little small um, for a postcard. But but it's not a bad idea. <laughs> you, could, you could just do like one image or something, like choose yeah. one object to do. You know, we did a thing, yeah. a lesson with choose an object that represented something. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of recycled paper that you can use. Although, segue into, did you already get out that paper, Karen? No, I've been telling you. Oh, okay, fine. Fine. You just tell me you don't let me forget to put that paper out, so I'm trying to help you out there. <laughs> and, um, I, I want to piggyback on, because we're all teaching writer's workshop as well, um, and this, that writers do the same thing. Writers start on something and they don't necessarily know where no, it's going. And I think us, like when we have a more like <laughs> a lot of us teacher types tend to be very linear, like you have to do this, then this, then this, then this, then this. But that's not actually the way that most creative people work. Right. They start on something and go this way. In fact, so my so husband is a writer and it flabbergasted me when I first met him how much gets thrown away. Right? How many? And I'm like, what's the story? He's like, I don't know yet. Right. Like right now, he's percolating a new novel, and he doesn't. I can't even talk to him about it. He can't even talk about it. He just does. But he writes every single day. Writes every single day. Writes every single day, and continues on pathways of the things that interest him with these characters. So it's the same thing you're describing. Right. With the Absolutely. Visual art. And I've heard writers say that the characters will kind of become real people in their head and they tell them where, where, to, where to go with it, right? Right. But I've had the same experience with art. Like, I look at it and it's like, I, I mean, I just, something tells me, like, it's not like anything's really talking to me, right? But I just get the, this idea of like, oh, it needs something right here. Or it needs orange, like, oh, it's, you know, I just, like, orange, and I think, orange, what? And then I put it on, and I'm like, oh, that looks pretty good. Like what you just the work kind of speaks back to you in some way. I don't know. Same thing that. happens with choreography. I'm dance, sure it does. Yeah. And walking, yeah. yeah. You don't necessarily know, and and that's why that's why the workshop model is so nice because it encourages kids to not be done. Right? There is no done to your story. It can go in many and varied ways, um, and this kind of work can help us build that story in the mind as well. Um, in fact, there was a visual artist who did a piece with my husband's work because she was so interested in everything he throws away. <laughs> oh. She created a whole thing of like this because a whole character was taken out of his last novel. He ended up in the editing process taking a whole character out. And it was probably up like 100 pages of writing and, and changing the story without that character. And she was like, that's what I'm interested in. And she did oh, this whole so thing with the, wow. with the lost character. Like, who's that person? Where's she going? You know? And it's okay, like that's it's what artists do, right? So, but for our kids, it's like, oh, but I can't get rid of anything. But some of the mo the biggest creativity is what you take out, right? And and what you choose to keep in in, this, in these iterations. Editing work. Mm -hmm. the same with writing. Exactly. Um, kind of okay. like I flipped it around yeah. on the page. No, 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 no,
about how mindfulness can relate to movement. And so I've been doing a lot of work this year with, with educators around mindfulness of movement. And um, when you tell someone just sit still and clear your mind, I mean, children, number one, can't do that at all. Most adults can't do that either. But when you start doing mindful movement, and some of you may be familiar with like Tai Chi or other sorts of mindful movement, all of a sudden our focus and attention becomes embodied and we can really begin to focus. And one of the ways I love to do that is with the hands. We worked on the mudras yesterday, but this is a practice called Bloom Where You're Planted and we have it in the dance. And it's just um, little fingers together, thumbs together. And you can think of this as a lotus, or you can think of it as a rose, or a beautiful bird of paradise, whatever flower makes you happy. And then you can use your whole body here. So we're gonna curl fingers in, bend the knees slightly, roll in, just round your back just a little bit. And then as you inhale, stand tall, feel your spine lengthen, open your fingers, lift your heart, and even gaze up if that feels good. Exhale, feel as though your whole body is breathing. Curl in, round in, find the bud of your flower. And then inhale up, feel your spine is so tall. Lengthen up, see if you can go a little deeper, just soft, bend the knees. Just focus on this feeling of curling and then stretching, feeling the fingers reach, feeling the heart reach. Ah, oh, breathing. Ah, out and low, and inhale. We're gonna start to bloom our fingers out a little bit more. So the next time we'll go down, exhale. And then inhale, bring your hands apart just a little bit. Feel that length, feel energy between the hands. Bring the hands back together. Inhale, take the hands a little wider, a little fuller. This time we'll take the hands all the way up. Stretch, keep the arms reaching, and then feel as though you have touched the sky. Just let yourself sway, maybe feel the clouds in the sky. Hmm. In our ledger art, we saw this beautiful image, we also saw it in Salvador, of creative's, creator's son. So now just shape your hands into a circle and then just turn on yourself and feel this energy of the creator sun. The way the Native Americans view this sense of the sun across the sky as being like a warrior going from one side in the east, the sun rises and then it sets in the west. It rises. Feel that energy of the sun moving across the sky, any way that feels right in your body. Creator sun. Bringing the hands back to the front, making a circle. Thinking about the phases of the moon. Does anybody know what phase of the moon we're in right now? Almost moon. New moon. New moon, thank you. The fact that everybody doesn't know that <laughs> makes me think, for most of us, we don't pay attention to the moon. The new moon is almost a black sky. What happens at the beginning when the moon starts to grow? What do we call that? Wax wing? Wax? <laughs> Waxing, right? So <laughs> So take one hand and make your moon come just a sliver and a maybe a quarter. Feel that the moon is being pulled open. Coming back together. Using both hands, fullness we call that. And so that was waxing. We're getting bigger, we're getting bigger, we're getting bigger getting bigger, other hand, getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger, maybe you can get it, getting bigger, a 
isn't done, feel the sensation of the full moon. If it's possible to close your eyes and feel the sensation of the full moon. The moon is so close to the earth. This last month, we had a gigantic moon. I hope you all saw it. And now bring your hands together so slowly and imagine the waning of the moon, the waning, getting smaller, getting smaller, getting smaller, almost looking like a black night sky with no moon. Hands right together. Right now she knows what she's doing. Open the hands out. We're going to be waxing. Open the hands out to the side. Get your moon fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller. And now closing, it's waning. The moon is waning. It takes about 28 days for the moon to become its full cycle. Opening out one more time. Fullest of the full moon. Yes, the breath. So we inhale as the moon becomes full. We exhale as it comes to waning to new moon. One more time, we inhale as it comes open. And we exhale and close to our last is the stars. So just any way that feels right in your hands, and you think about the morning star. We talked about in this lesson cooperation and conflict, but we know in the natural world, one thing gives way to the next. The sunrise gives way to the day. The sunset gives way to the night. The stars rise and all is in cooperation. The cycles of nature allow us to feel in harmony with ourselves. Coming back to your blue. Feel that blue that's in the center of your heart. Feel the peace when you can get into your body. Feel yourself become part of the universe, not separate. Part of all that is, all that is created, all that exists in this beautiful world that we live in that we are meant to be stewards of this natural beauty, protecting it, supporting it always, as we support each other. All right. That's my full movement. <laughs> I'm so sorry I got my full movement. I have to stuff. Sorry about that. So, the, um, and the, I think it's really important because we, as adults, in all things artistic and creative, we tend to judge ourselves, right? And you all have heard yourself say things like, I can't really do, I don't really know how, I'm not really. And just thinking about that fixed mindset, that's really all it is, that can get in the way, and that we follow with our kids. We say, I'm not really a good artist, but you should do this. Why would the kids want to do it, right? So encouraging that, trying to get that talk out of our heads is helpful. Um, and I agree. I think it's very challenging to meditate. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing with meditation is there's supposed to be other things in your head. You're not supposed to clear it. Right. But I find the mindful movement really helps. That's why yoga is so helpful as well. Absolutely. Or the ocean waves coming in and out. That's where I practice the breathing is yeah. the ocean waves. That sound. Um, Anger. Because I can't get my mind to stop either. So, um, but you don't have to. Like that's the thing. So we can model that with our kids and help them with that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you. I um, did that. <laughs> all right. So uh, I just want to show you guys where things are. Yes. So that you have all of the resources there for you. And then we'll come into a reflection. So let me just show you. Thank you so oh, much, Peggy. You gave us our last little movement. Mm -hmm. Lessons, the science and performing arts, and social studies and visual arts. 
So you can see the Engage Explore explain all those pieces in there directly. Those you are not going to find on the curriculum drive yet because they're part of 21-22. <laughs> they're cutting edge uh, curriculum, so that'll be by, you know, before next school year, meaning this summer. But they're directly there. The other thing that I wanted to show you on here is um, Jessica and um, Denise made these wonderful cheat sheets. Um, cheat sheets for um, for all of the lessons. and then there's the lesson plan, okay? So for third grade, um, there's four units for theater. So she's got four integrated lessons, one that's ELA, one science, one history, one math. That ideally align with what you should be doing yes. according to the district scope and yes. sequence. So the units are designed according to the district scope and sequence. So like the science is the science that should be around that time of year. <laughs> so we thought about that. Same with fourth grade. So this is the cheat sheet way to go to the to the lessons, right? That you can you, that are linked right in there. But what I want to show you is in the drive. So if you go to the shared drive, I have more things than you have, but you know the shared drive where you have your curriculum. So it says PUSD curriculum. Like where you find this, everybody recognizes this in the shared drive, right? So then you just go to elementary and you go to a grade level, okay? And then it says arts. Have you all seen that before? Hopefully you've gone there. <laughs> so right there is the arts. And then you can see the My Masterpieces standards, I mean the My Masterpieces lessons, theater, visual arts, Dance will be added on here for next year, okay? And um, the standards, the map of standards are in there, okay? They haven't changed, so those will be there. Uh, music is available for K2. There's a scope and sequence, uh, not for 3.5 because we provide it everywhere for 3.5, so it's not really included in there. But I'm gonna give you an example from visual arts. So it looks like this, <laughs> which is not very exciting, but Basically, there are six units in visual arts. There are four units in theater um, and music, and there will be you know, pretty much four units in dance. So there's six units in visual arts. Memory, culture, identity, social, or community, empathy, and voice. So it takes you through a sequence. And then with each unit, there's a lesson plan, okay? So the units, I'm gonna grab cultural. The units look exactly like your ELA and math and science units, right? They're the um, uh, UBD framework. So it has the essential question, enduring understandings, key knowledge, and key skills. And then um, at the bottom, it links to the lesson plan. Okay, that's the integrated lesson. So I can click there. I'm going to go out of the other way because I'm here. So if I go unit two, science. I'm sorry, Karen? Yeah. Did you, is, is this on shared with me? or Shared, shared drive. drive. Shared this drive. is in the PUSC curriculum drive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, you can see the arts integrated lesson plan with the objective, with the visual arts standard, the integrated standard, the science standard. Um, the competencies, the enduring understandings, all that, and then you can see it's a 5E lesson plan, okay? And all these slide presentations are linked. So you can see everything that you need is, is linked in there. Um, so what we'll continue to do this year is to take these theater and visual arts lessons and layer in dance pieces, just like we would do today. 
um, so they'll start to change. But there's all sorts of resources in here. And again, these are designed in that 5e model, so they're not they're not meant to be one day lesson. They're meant to support your content lessons with the so you don't have to go. Oh, how can I integrate the arts here? It's integrated for you. Um, and and those and can you show the launch units too? Yes, I'm going to show that. Sorry, yeah. So um, so that's that's how that works. Does that make sense? Second grade, I do want to point out there's an additional Charles White lesson plan in here for second grade. The second grade heroes in our community. You know, Charles White, famous artist, is from Altadena, Pasadena. So. Uh, this is a specific lesson plan that Denise wrote that talks to his life. And also there's a dance for Jackie Robinson who came from our community. Yes, yes. Dance, dance, and the dance lunch. lunch, there's a Jackie yes, Robinson. Yes, exactly. So, so, um, That's so I'm going to go to theater. Because for theater and for dance, we have what are known as launch units. The goal of the launch unit is the same as the goal of the launch unit in Readers and Writers Workshop to teach the skills, but then you can apply them. So um, here's the theater launch unit, second grade. Um, so this is like a little, like a, a catalog. It has these warm-up activities, check-out activities, drama skills and vocabulary activities, attention and focus tools, drama activities, and they're all like, little quick descriptions of each activity. Another thing is that um, for a lot of these, there's videos of what it looks like. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So when COVID hit, we got funding for me to make videos of some of the activities. Um, keep in mind, they were geared towards kids watching them at home, but it is like me, and sometimes my husband makes cameos if I need a person. Um, <laughs> so you can watch if you wanna go laugh at him, um, but like it's me speaking directly to students, but it gives you a way to facilitate it. So, um, I think I call them um, theater, stop, go, jump, clap, we'll have one. Yeah, there's different ones in here, so they're, but the videos are, are all there. Hey, hey. Oh, what are you doing? Sorry. Oh, um, <laughs> like just There's a lot. Yeah. Most yeah. districts don't have this, believe me. Really? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so it's not meant to be, I mean, there's a lot there. That doesn't mean that you're expected to teach all of that. If there is a, is a resource for you to 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 um, to deepen the work, you know? Um, Anyway, so there are videos added in there. We also still have, and Canvas will be available to us next year. All of this is on Canvas. I don't know if you guys have found it on Canvas, but it's all there. Um, in the, uh, what's it called? It? The, S, the, um, the Commons? Commons, Canvas Commons. Yeah, exactly. So and each lesson was meant, was made virtually, so you could copy it directly to your Canvas page on Canvas Commons. Yes. Okay. So that's where you find everything. It's in the exact same place where your ELA and math and science units are. So if you want to share that with your friends, that would be great. Um, and then Peggy has begun to develop this wonderful dance curriculum, which is not on the shared drive yet, but it will be. It will be. <laughs> I do have the scope and sequence and the units are there, but we haven't put the launch up yet and we haven't finished the That's fine. So here's the answer. So you'll see, the way that Peggy did it, uh, it's kind of nice because her units actually look like lessons in a way. And there's a lot here. So um, you can see the various skills broken down for you as well. Okay? So that's that. We wanted to give you the how it can actually look in real life, but then also where everything is. It's pretty comprehensible, a lot of videos in there to help. So I hope that helps with your percolating your minds as you go into the summer. Um, we appreciate your um, time and effort today and all of the work these last couple of days. And hopefully you're inspired 
for some arts integration and exploration. Yeah. Can I also add, like, if you're ever looking for something or need or want something, I would so much rather you email and, like, let us help you. Because, mm -hmm. like, right. I would so much rather help you than have you be, like, searching for something. Because yeah. we wrote it so, like, we can help you understand or navigate something. Yeah, and that's why the cheat sheet's kind of nice, because it gives you the topics all the way through. Yeah, um, yeah I have one question. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pick these real quick. While you, well, I'm going to pick them while you guys are doing the survey. So if you have a device, please go to the um, agenda. And um, I linked, oh no, not It's actually on the slides. So always. It's on the slides. So I think also so you can link to the slides from the agenda, and there's a survey link right there on the last, on the last one. Okay. Uh,